Welcome back. In this section, we'll be talking about horizontal shifts or phase shifts for sine and cosine functions. So, so far we've looked at things where we have a sine or a cosine function where there's been a change in the amplitude, so that would be something involving a vertical stretch, or a change in the period, that's something involving a horizontal stretch or compression. Uh, we've also talked about a vertical shift, and now we want to introduce the idea of a horizontal shift, which we call a phase shift. So the first thing that you'll notice here is that you could rewrite what's inside the sine function as this, that b times x minus c, that if you factored b out of everybody, that would be b times x minus c over b. And we're doing this to help simplify some of our work later on when we're doing our transformations of our trig functions and graphing them. So here, if you wanted to think about what we've got going on with this trig function, once we've rewritten it in this form, you've got a couple of things. Number one, you have an amplitude that you can find, which is the amplitude absolute value of A. You know that B controls the period. That would be a period being 2 pi divided by absolute value of B. You also know that D controls the vertical shift. That would be upwards by D. And finally, this last part here, C over B, this is our horizontal shift. We call that the phase shift. And here, this would be a phase shift of positive C over B, or in other words, C over B units to the right. If just for fun, let's pretend that we'd had instead uh, bx plus c. If it had been a plus instead, then that would be a phase shift of negative c over b, which would have been c over b units to the left. So same sort of thing that we have going on uh, when we're thinking about horizontal transformations, uh, that our horizontal transformations work in sort of the opposite way that we expect x minus c over b is a shift to the right, and if it was x plus c over b, that would have been a shift to the left. So we've got ourselves a nice little function here, y equals negative 5 sine 3x minus pi, and we'd like to know the amplitude, period, and phase shift for that function. And before I do that, I'm going to do what I did on the previous slide, which is that 3 for the 3x minus pi, I'm going to factor that 3 out, leaving x minus pi over 3. So that means then for my amplitude, that should be absolute value of negative 5, which is 5. The period should be 2 pi divided by absolute value of 3, which is 2 pi over 3, and my phase shift, since it's x minus pi over 3, my phase shift should be positive pi over 3, because we would be going pi over 3 units to the right. All right, so here we want to work backwards. We know what the amplitude is, we know what the period is, and we know what the phase shift is. So if the phase shift is negative pi over 2, then that means that inside of our cosine function, we'll have cosine of whatever b is times x plus pi over 2. So we know at least we have that part already. So some of this we already know, that c over b should be negative pi over 2. We need to figure out what b is, that's the next part, and that's where we know the amplitude is 3 pi, uh, sorry, the period is 3 pi. Since the period is 3 pi, and the period is 2 pi divided by absolute value of b, you could find out that absolute value of b is 
2 pi divided by 3 pi, which is 2 thirds. So we've got two choices here really for B. B could be positive 2 thirds or B could be negative 2 thirds if we wanted. And same thing with our amplitude. We know that the amplitude is the absolute value of A. So 7 is the absolute value of A, which means A could either be 7 or negative 7. So if I were writing out my trig function, I could say I could choose positive 7 for A. I could choose positive 2 thirds for B. And x minus negative pi over 2, which becomes x plus pi over 2. There we go. So that's one option. But sort of implied here by the can I find a second equation with the same properties, yes, for sure I can. I could use, instead of positive 7, I could use negative 7. And that would have the same amplitude, the same period, the same phase shift, and everything. I could have also chosen to use, instead of negative 7 for A, I could have chosen to use negative 2 thirds for B. So I could have had negative 7 cos of negative 2 thirds times x plus pi over 2. And in fact, that's not the end of it, because in addition to the two options that I have, that A could be 7 or negative 7, and that B could be 2 thirds or negative 2 thirds, I also have the idea of a vertical shift that I could introduce that doesn't affect the period, it doesn't affect the phase shift, it doesn't affect the amplitude. So in addition to these three that I already have, I could also have things like 7 cosine 2 thirds x plus pi over 2 and then add on a vertical shift, let's say plus 1 or plus 2, or plus 3, or any other number that I'd like to add on. So all of these functions that I'm drawing on the board here, these are all trig functions that are cosine functions with an amplitude of 7. They all have a period of 3 pi, and they all have a phase shift of negative pi over 2, which is shift to the left of pi over 2. So yes, not only can I find a second cosine function, in fact, there's infinitely many of them. Okay, so now as far as the graphing goes, we've already looked at just graphing a basic trig function with just vertical and horizontal stretches. And then we extended that and said, well, what we would do if we had a vertical shift was just to add D on to all of our Y values. And the same thing is going to happen with our phase shift. So first off, if we're thinking about graphing our trig function, we're first going to rewrite it in this form. Then first think about the key points for the simpler function, the one without the phase shift, the one without the vertical shift. And once we have our key points, then we just need to do our two horizontal and vertical shifts. You add the phase shift to all of the x coordinates, you add the vertical shift to all the y coordinates, and there you go, you've got your transformed five points. And then once you've plotted those five points, you can then connect the points to make one full cycle of your trig function, and then graph another cycle if needed. So let's start with this function. y equals 4 sine negative 5x minus pi, which I'm going to first rewrite it by factoring that negative 5 out. So that's negative 5 times x plus pi over 5. And then next I'm going to take care of the negative that I have here using the odd property of the sine function. That, that should be then negative 4 sine of positive 5 times x plus pi over 5. And so for this function, we can find out what's going on with it. Uh, but first, we're going to look at the simpler version of it, the one without the phase shift. 
we can see that this function that we're looking at here, that it has a phase shift of negative pi over 5. So in other words, uh, when I've looked at this function, it will be the sine function that's been shifted to the left by pi over 5. And I'll deal with the shift to the left later on. So all of our vertical and horizontal shifts, those are the last things that we deal with. First thing we deal with is the simpler function, which just has a vertical stretch and a horizontal stretch. So I'm looking at negative 4 sine of 5x. And I'll find the key points for that first. And I do that by first finding my period, which is 2 pi divided by 5. Then I'll find the length of my subintervals. And I do that by taking that period and dividing it into four equal sized pieces. So in other words, pi over 10. And once I've got the length of my subinterval, then I know that my x values are going to go up by pi over 10. Well, there we go. So my x values are 0 pi over 10, 2 pi over 10, 3 pi over 10, 4 pi over 10, and of course simplify those fractions. And then for the y values, since it's a sine function, the y values start with 0, then going to my coefficient of negative 4, then to 0, then to the opposite of the negative 4, then back to 0 again. And so that would be the graph or those would be the key points, rather, for that function, y equals negative 4 sine 5x. And so now what I want to graph is my function that has that phase shift. So that means for this function, I'm going to be carrying out a phase shift of negative pi over 5, or in other words, I'll be subtracting pi over 5 from all of my x values. Or you can think of it as adding negative pi over 5 to all of your x values. And so away we go. Zero minus pi over five, that's negative pi over five. Pi over 10 minus pi over five, that is negative pi over 10. Pi over five minus pi over five, that's zero. Three pi over 10 minus pi over five, that's pi over 10. And 2 pi over 5 minus pi over 5, that is pi over 5. Um, just as an aside here, the subtractions that I'm doing, the calculations that I'm doing, for example, to get something like negative pi over 10, I did that by taking pi over 10 and subtracting pi over 5. And in my mind, I was thinking of it more like the fraction 1 tenth minus 1 fifth which is easy enough to do on your calculator and find that that's negative a tenth. So that's how I knew that pi over 10 minus pi over 5 would be negative pi over 10. That's the sort of thinking that I was doing there when I was coming up with my x values. So there we go. We've now found all of our x values by subtracting pi over 5 from the original x values that we had. And the y values, those are not going to be changed. We don't have a vertical shift here. So our y values are still 0, then negative 4, then 0, then 4, then 0. And so now we're ready to start plotting our points. So we had negative pi over 5 and 0, negative pi over 10, and negative 4, 
we had 0 and 0, we had pi over 10 and positive 4, we had pi over 5 and 0. And then, of course, continuing along in the same way to do another cycle of this trig function. So our y values on the left would then go up to 4, then back to 0, then down to negative 4, then back to 0. And there is our second cycle. And, of course, we need to label all of those points that are not on the x-axis. So... A little bit of labeling to do here. 3 pi over 10 and 4. I've got pi over 10 and 4. We've also got down below negative pi over 10 and negative 4. And negative pi over 2 and negative 4. There we go. So all the points that are not on a tick mark, those have all been labeled. And I also still need to label my graph with its equation. And when I label it with its equation, you can label it with the original version or the factored version, whichever you like better. I'm going to go with the original version that I have here, 4 sine negative 5x minus pi. And there we go, those are two cycles now graphed of that trig function.